have bad memories. I think of what happened to me, my family. Try to forget, but I can't. It was horrible. My father, I don't have any information about him. I don't know if he's still even alive. I really miss him. Imagine if it's war here, and then you go without saying bye. Eight years. In my heart, I didn't have a peace because I didn't know where is my sister. My name is Solange, Butira Solange. I'm from Congo. My husband was murdered. I lost my children. I have no news about them. I left Congo because of the war. My husband told me, can't stay in the house. It's dangerous. We need to run away. The soldiers, they killed my husband. After killing him, the one grabbed me and removed my clothes, started raping me. Raping without mercy. It was very, very hard. Now here in Uganda, I'm alone. I'm a refugee. It's the worst thing can happen for a mother to lose three children without knowing where they are. Never think of the family I used to have. It makes me feel lonely to know where my family is, my children. That's the only thing I want. At least I know if they're still alive. And be with them again. Only one thing that keeps you rooted in this world, then, and that's family. It all began back in the year 2005. We uh, came into contact with a young Afghan refugee named Mansoor. During his escape, he also lost contact to all his family. And for five years, he hadn't known if they were dead or alive or where they were in the world. And we kind of looked at each other and went, well, why don't we help you? We started going to all the different refugee agencies, but no one that seemed to be able to help. There's a hundred thousand refugees coming from this part. There's another hundred thousand coming from that other part. But uh, where your family is, we have no idea. We ended up um, back in uh, Peshawar in Pakistan. The guy that had helped him escape five years earlier, he suddenly met him on the street. He said, you know what, I, I think I know where one of your family members is. Here's a phone number. Next thing that happened was that Here's his kid brother picking up the phone. Five and a half years of silence is, is shattered. They were aware of each other's existence now. Suddenly there was life again. Suddenly there was something to live for. Ah, uh, I definitely looked at, at Chris and he looked at me and we didn't say a word. 
we were completely speechless. This could be us as much as it was them. You know, we were just lucky being born on the other side of the fence. That was really it. These were two brothers that had the same kind of relationship that we've shared. All these experiences got us saying, look, two days with every possibility at our fingertips compared to a refugee found nothing. What we realized was that there is no place for them to go. We kind of looked at each other and went, well, obviously we have to build this. The UNHCR estimates that at the end of 2009, there were more than 43 million forcibly displaced people worldwide. Many separated from family and friends by conflict and relocation with no way of finding their loved ones. They are the most vulnerable of the vulnerable. Not only they are extremely poor in general, but they were separated from their families, from their communities, from their country, and they have no chance to communicate with the people they care for. Hundreds of thousands of families out there that are separated. You come down to that one person in the midst of it all, which is a refugee standing somewhere in Kenya, in Burundi, in Uganda. And then it gets very uh, personal, something you can really relate to. My name is Biaruhanga Kisembo. I'm Congolese and uh, I have 22 years. I'm living here in Kampala with my siblings, two brothers and one sister. We are here, we are refugees. In Congo, we had a good life. My father was a doctor, I was studying. In 2003, the civilian war entered into our village. They wanted to kill my dad. When they came, my father was not around. They told us, now someone among you is going to pay. Then they shoot. They killed my mom, who gave birth to me. I was shocked, I was touched, because I've never seen killing someone at uh, my presence. And I got much fear. That's the reason why I took my brothers. Now I'm a father of my brothers and my sister. Sometimes they ask me, where is daddy? I don't know. I'm not sure if he's alive or not. I feel bad because I could be a father late, but not now. I'm too young. Living as a refugee, there are so many difficulties. We continue living a bad life in poverty, it is difficult, it is difficult. The money we are getting from picking bottles are not enough for our life. We don't have enough food to live and to survive on. In our country, Congo, if someone finish secondary school, 
is an educated man. He's supposed to work. But now I'm jobless. I'm not going to school. I'm just there. Find my father is something very important. Even being at least in contact, even to know if he's alive. In most cases, as a refugee, you're just sitting around waiting for nothing. And here they can actually take charge of their own situation. Refugees United is a online global tool to go in and do a profile where they can search for lost loved ones. They can either do it online or they can do it via their mobile phone. You only give out the information that you're comfortable with. You can put in initials, your religious leader's name, the tribe you're from. A nickname, a scar, a pet's name. The food I mm. like. Yeah, that those family members you're searching for mm. know you enjoy it. <laughs> what they they know is uh, mm. rice and beans. You like rice and beans. <laughs> My profile. Well, I would put in DM 1974 as, as year of birth. I would definitely write that I was born in the outskirts of Copenhagen, Husum. Tattoo on my left arm, scar on my right knee. Our pet cat as a kid was named Odie. He would be CM. He would write uh, born 78, also in the outskirts of Copenhagen and Husum. CM, born in Husum, Copenhagen, 1978. He would definitely mention the cat Odie as well. I have a cat called Odie, who was very, very fat. He's got the same tattoo on his left arm. I share a tattoo with my brother, for example, so that tattoo would be, uh, would be an absolute enabler to figure out who's who. I wouldn't know right there and then that that would be Chris. If everybody shares knowledge about each other that's meaningless to most, but makes a whole world of sense to some. Chris. Now, we have already made a profile with your name. Mm. So, with that, you can now start searching for mm -hmm. the person you want. Mm -hmm. These are the people you're searching for. You're searching for Jusline, Raphael, Rebecca, Tito, Bettin, and Chama. If they're still alive, maybe they can be checking and they find me there. It's my only hope that I can get connected to them. By myself alone, I'm hopeless to find my dad. But with Refugee United, I have some hope. What we want to do is create a digital shelter for well, for people who very, very often don't even have any kind of shelter. It's about being in need, suffering a lot, and at the same time, you don't know where your mother is, your dad, your son, your sister. And with this uh, simple invention, uh, we can enable people to find each other. We need to make sure that we build a tool that was first and foremost for the refugees but also very much a tool for all the organization that actually works with refugees. We really want to take the structure, the strategy, the private sector companies, and marry it with the passion of the NGOs. Our vision was really to build a bridge between the world of aid and the world of business. I think it's, it's a very symbiotic relationship. Uh, Refugees United uh, provides the technology, the know-how, and we, to the extent possible, provide the manpower that is required and the access to the refugee populations. We're taking these people who are some, among the most impoverished in the world and we're putting them in today's world with modern technology. The mobile phone is by far the most democratic product of modern technology I know. 
with mobile phones, you can put people in contact with other people, with their families, with their loved ones, everywhere in the world. Well, the mission of Refugees United is directly to empower refugees to be active players in the process of finding family. It's about one thing. All right, you can't find your family. Let's try and work on that. This is what we can do, and this is how we can help you help yourself. Rest for my country. Told me about refugees in United. I make my profile. And I did, I write my name, I wrote my, what I, I did in my country. And after three days, Dennis was there. When she called me, I was so happy because the voice, I know her voice very well. Somebody tell you, your sister is here. I can, I can help, you can communicate. Huh? And it's gratis, it's free. It means I'm not alone anymore. Dennis is not alone anymore. Now I can't sleep. I can't sleep. I know Denise is there. Hey, I know where my family, they are. Even if I can die, it's okay. My family, I know they are fine. They are still in life. All the people that we're trying to help, they all have that same story. They can't find that which means the most to them, their family. And that's the reality of countless people across the world. With the technology we provide and the partnership we have, I think that we actually have a strong possibility of removing this problem altogether, work our way out of business, really, which is um, what it should it be all about when it comes to the world of aid. The massive goal for Refugees United is to reconnect thousands of families. Pure and simple. <laughs>